So, Kat, welcome hey. to the podcast. What's going on, Mark? Yeah, I'm excited to talk fitness. Um, I've done quite a bit of research on fitness years ago. Um, okay. And, in fact, uh, uh, my girlfriend and I, uh, we actually met through fitness <laughs> yeah. at a gym. And now she actually, she did bodybuilding. Okay. Uh, yeah, are you familiar with the bodybuilding world and competing? I'm getting, I'm getting into it. Uh, one of my training partners that was supposed to come with me today, uh, he's a pro physique bodybuilder, and he's kind of getting me into that okay. community. So I'm just learning. Okay. So yeah. Yeah, she was. Uh, um, she competed in figure, women's okay. figure. Yeah. Sure. How long? And so she's got a gym now in Hercules. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. I'm I gotta come check you guys. Time. I gotta come check you guys out one day. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, where's your gym located? So, um, it's off of Thirty Fourth and Adeline in West Oakland. Um, you guys are familiar with the shopping center right there in Emeryville, where they have like Home Depot, oh, yeah, Best yeah. Buy, right on the other side of the freeway from from that shopping center. Okay. Yeah. So very easy access to. Very easy access, right off of the eight. Well, five eighty. Okay. So if you get off at the five eighty. And you get off at um, San Pablo Avenue. It's, it's right there. Now, did you grow up in the Bay Area? Yeah, I'm actually born and raised in the Bay Area. Um, man, I've lived everywhere from San Pablo, Berkeley, uh, Oakland, and even lived in Pinole for, okay. for a time being. Yeah. Okay. You were just saying you went to Pinole Valley High School, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah how How'd you like the high school? It was cool. It was cool. It was very diverse. Um, I. We just had the principal, the current principal, on the podcast. Maybe, okay. What was that Sam a month ago? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a lot different now. Like it wasn't when I was growing up. Pinole wasn't as diverse. <laughs> <laughs> to put it in those words, it was you know, it's a very old school town to <clears throat> to grow up in the nineties. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah, the Bay Area seems like it's gotten a lot more diverse, probably in the last five to ten years. Oh yeah, it's a melting pot. Yeah. It's a melting pot. It's people from all over now. It's like, it's it's so funny that one of my neighbors just moved in, and I think he's from like Minnesota or something like that. And he was like, "Yeah, you know, I came out here and the weather." And there's I, quite a few people from Minnesota that live here in the Bay Area. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Once they this is it's seventy degrees outside right now. And uh, you know, instead of minus minutes. seventy, right? <laughs> exactly. So once they get out here, they they love the real estate and they they stay. You know. Yeah. So what made you open up your gym in Oakland? Oh man, um, that's we're, I don't even know where you want me to start right now. Um, four years ago, I was actually struggling with my own personal health. Um, I was still working in corporate America, and uh, it was one of those things where. Um, do you, you guys remember the Napa earthquake back in 2014 yeah. destroyed downtown yep. Napa or whatever the case may be that day while the earthquake was happening I was actually in the hospital in the emergency room they were thinking that I was having a massive heart attack and uh, what it was I woke up you was, thought you were having a massive heart attack yeah like all my symptoms like I was you're like, a young guy very young how old are you um, I'm 34 going on 35 wow yeah they thought you were having a heart attack a massive part of the heck. Yeah, they were rushing me. As soon as they got to the house, um, the paramedics were looking at me. All my symptoms were as if I was having a massive heart attack. So they were rushing me to, to the hospital, pumping me full of all this stuff to make sure, you know, my blood vessels would open up. And uh, it was like one in the morning I woke up and I had this uh, strange pain in my chest. And I was laying there with my wife and my kid. My, uh, my four sons were in their room. They were asleep woke up and uh it was like this this discomfort in my chest i'm like did i sleep on the remote or i don't even know what was going on and mind you i was 80 pounds heavier than what you see today okay and uh so i get up and I, you know i'm like oh let me just walk it off and the next thing you know i'm like the, the pain is just getting tighter and tighter feels like my chest is caving in i can't breathe and then all of a sudden, I'm like in a mode like, maybe I should wake up my wife because I feel like I'm about to black out. And uh, I go wake the wife up. I'm like, babe, I don't know what's going on, but I can barely stand up. It feels like my chest is caving in. I'm gasping for air. I think you should call the paramedics. And she, she knows I don't like going to the doctor. So red flags are going off for my wife. And uh, she calls them. They come over. They see my symptoms. They see me gasping for air. Barely can stand up crouched over and they're like hey we need to get you in you have all the symptoms of 
you know, a heart attack, massive heart attack. So they put me in the, in the uh, ambulance, rushed me over to the hospital, and there I was, you know, going on, I believe I was going on 30. It was a month prior to my birthday. Yeah, so it was a month prior to my 30th birthday, and they're rushing me over, and uh, that's kind of like when my life changed, you know. It was like I got to the fork road, and it was like, man, like life and death was becoming a reality. And um, What was it? They couldn't tell me. So the crazy part about it, so I'm in this hospital. I'm get, like They had me hooked up to all these machines. Doctors are running in and out the room. Um, they're doing all their tests and everything and all of a sudden I'm laying there and the room starts to shake and I'm in my mind you know I'm barely breathing I'm thinking it's all over right and um, and they told me it was the earthquake uh, the earthquake later so you were in Napa at the time no no right here oh, in Richmond Oakland. Richmond uh, right here in Richmond at doctors before they, okay. they shut it down and uh, so I was there for like six seven hours all tests came back and they're like nope all the doctors like, no, you're perfectly fine. I'm like, perfectly fine. Like, no. I was like, what? What was it? They're like, mm, we don't know. Like, all your tests came back and everything's all good. I was like, if that wasn't a heart attack, I don't want no parts of what a heart attack is, right? And what's crazy is I had a high school buddy, um, which passed away a year prior, and he was also overweight, and he was he was a young man as well. He was going up. If he wasn't 30, he was going on 30. And so that that was kind of like a reality check. Um, the doctors told me um, if I continue to feel any kind of discomfort in my chest to go see a specialist, a cardiologist. And I did continue to feel some pain in, in my chest, so I went to go see a cardiologist. And from what, he, what I told him, he was like, uh, sounds like you might have a congested valve. We might have to put a stent in, open it up, get the blood flowing through there he was like until we get the test back until we do a stress test he was like you know that's that's what it sounds like from from uh what you're telling me i was like ah man okay so i went in there did the test they hook you up to all these monitors they put you on a treadmill try to get your heart rate up take some pictures of your heart and see how the blood is flowing to the heart did all that and uh he was like nope all your tests came back and you're yeah everything's good it's like then what 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 is it? You know, why am I feeling this discomfort, this tightness in my chest like this? He was like, yeah, can't really tell you that. He was like, pretty much. He was like, I can tell you kind of overweight. You might want to start exercising, maybe eating a little bit better. But besides that, yeah, you have a clean bill of health. And that kind of kind of was like, wow. It put me in one of those modes where it was uh, essentially like, if I did die that day, I'm, I'm the sole provider of my family at that time. So... You know, what would that do to my sons? What would that do to my wife? What kind so of that was a big wake up call for you? Huge wake up call. Huge wake up call. Because at that time, like I said, I was barely going on thirty, and uh, like I said, I was eighty pounds heavier, the biggest I've ever been in my life. Um, I was kind of on a spiritual journey as well, where I was kind of finding out, you know, what my purpose was and why so many things in my life just didn't feel right you know you you ever have that job where you you walk in and as soon as you walk in you're like uh it just drains the life out of you yep <laughs> yeah, i was just uh listening to a podcast and someone who is a psychiatrist uh -huh. was talking about depression and why people are depressed yeah and the psychiatrist was from the uk and was a very interesting take on it but they did a study on the people the number of people that are not happy with their job or somewhat satisfied to a point where it's obvious they're not happy with what they're doing. Exactly. Eighty seven percent. Oh yeah. Easily. You gotta you gotta think about it. The the way society is made up now is like don't follow your dreams, find a way to pay your bills, kind of thing. And by society standards, I was doing really well, you know, um, making six figures at the job at the corporate job that I had. I was you know, in in a management position to grow within the company, um, had 401k, had benefits for the family, the whole nine, you know. And essentially, I wasn't doing something I loved. So every time I go to work, it was just that immediate stress that would just hit me. I could be having the greatest day ever, 
But as soon as I walked in that door, it was like the life was sucked out of me. And uh, I didn't realize that at first, but as I was going through my journey and, you know, doing, uh, losing the weight, it kind of it kind of dawned on me because it took me essentially six months to lose all the weight once I kind of honed in on you know my nutrition making sure I was exercising for at least an hour a day and uh, I lost it in six months and then the next thing it was it was like self-discovery it was like man how did I get to this point in my life how did I gain the 80 pounds first of all and it was more so realizing that you know, it was due to stress. You know, you have that 10, 12 hour day at work, kind of stressed out from all the things that are going on and then you're you're having a beer or, you know, you're, you're, you're having some chips and some ice cream with your dinner and whatever the case may be. And slowly but surely you're, you're giving yourself something, trying to comfort or soothe yourself, which has no nutritional value and you're just digging yourself in a deeper hole. And it was you know, and a lot of those foods, those comfort foods, especially the ones packed with sugar, uh-huh. affect your dopamine levels. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a whole bunch of saturated fats. Yeah, and it, it's like a drug addiction. Exactly, exactly. And uh, w- once I got to that point where I was physically feeling better, I was starting to work on my spiritual and, and more of my mental side at that point. And I start, you just start self reflecting and start asking yourself questions like, man. It's like, well, what should I be doing with my life right now? I'm, you know, still fairly young. I'm 30 years old. What what could I be doing besides what I'm doing? And it kind of just dawned on me. It was like having a conversation spiritually. It's kind of dawned on me. It's like, I asked myself, what do I love to do? Well, I've always, since playing football and playing sports back in the day, I love training people. I actually was doing a weight training program um, when I was younger, but due to having my son at such a young age kind of took me out of that world and not able to play sports for myself um, as I got injured playing football also took me out of that world and it's kind of one of those things when you're growing up and you're having a kid it's like your parents are like well now it's time to face reality it's time to get a job you know and uh, so that's what I did got a job and it was something that I was good at but I didn't really have a passion for so um told myself hey you know was having a conversation with my wife and it was like hey babe you know you know I love motivating people I love uh, fitness I was like I think this is something I want to do I was like the only thing that's killing me right now is time you know it's like I'm putting in these long hours at the corporate office I'm like I'm moving up in the ranks and all it's, it's really demanding I was like I just don't have the time to do it I was like she was like well if it's supposed to happen time will appear and you know as soon as she said that maybe within the next like month or two the actual time did appear and isn't uh, it funny how that happens yeah yeah sometimes when you just put something as simple as that just mentally like hey i'm looking for a little bit more time yeah. and then just magically you kind of discover it right it's it's kind of like the same thing when you buy a car you then notice everyone else with the same, exact car. same car so as soon as you want time yeah and as soon as you want time you kind of discover the little pockets of extra time you have exactly um it was funny because as soon as that happened it was one of those things where you know i'm i'm getting my cert for um, personal training and everything and Usually when I go to the gym, I go over to 24-Hour Fitness at the mall at Hilltop, right? And part of my routine is take off my glasses because I don't work out with my glasses. I leave them in the car, and I leave them, like, in the center console. Well, this one particular day, I put the glasses down in the center console like I always do, go in, work out, come back out, get ready to drive home, look down, no glasses. I'm like, I know I leave my glasses here all the time, so I'm searching through the car, can't find the glasses, Next thing you know, I look outside the car, glasses are right next to the car, smashed, right? And I'm like, wow, okay. Well, at my job, I do a lot of driving for the company, and um, I'm required to have glasses while I drive. So it's the holiday season. It was Christmas time at that time. And uh, I call in. I was like, hey, my glasses just got broke. I'm going to go see my optometrist, see how soon they can give me a pair over. I didn't have a spare pair of glasses. And they were like, okay. So I go in, see the optometrist. They're like, this is the holiday season. A lot of people are off. We're actually really backed up. They're like, it's going to be at least like two to three weeks before we get you a pair. 
and they were like, do you have any backups or anything like that? I was like, nah, this is my only pair of glasses. They were like, well, we'll write you a note to your employer saying, hey, you know, we you need to take some time off. So that's where the, the time began. And uh, I gave I gave my employer the note and then came home and was like, hey, babe, you know, I think I lucked up. I got two, maybe three weeks off of work until they get my glasses hooked up. And she was like, isn't this the time you were asking for? I was like, dang, it is. She was like, so what are you going to do? I was like, man, I was like, it's winter time. I was like, I was training people in the in the local parks in the area. I was like, I was like, I could always, you know, kind of transform our garage into like a little personal gym. She was like, let's do it. You got two weeks. Let's let's get it done. So you know, you know, when the wife kind of pulls your card and kind of you know gives you one of those checks, those gut checks. It was one of those things where, uh, you know, cleaned out the garage start getting investing in equipment and stuff like that putting the word out there that I was doing classes from the house little mini boot camps and stuff like that and uh, it started picking up and three weeks were coming up so you know called into the optometrist hey you know how does it what how's uh, my prescription look there like, oh yeah it should be here just come in pick up pick up your pair and then that l- that sudden rush of reality just hit you again, like, ah, oh, I gotta go back to the nine, nine to five, right? And I uh, ended up going in there, going to go pick up my glasses, and crazy enough, when I walked into the building, I went to go pick up my glasses, and uh, they weren't there. The, the lady was like, let me go check in the back, see where your prescription is. Couldn't find them. And I was like, well, you know, it should be somewhere in the system, right? Just tracking or something you guys do she was like yeah let me look in the computer and she was like oh my god this this crazy look came over her. she's just like oh my god I'm so sorry mr. Catley I'm so sorry I was like what what happened she was like whoever put in this order forgot to press enter and it never went out I was like they didn't press enter she was like yeah they forgot to complete the order they forgot one step to complete the order she was like, we're still super behind. It's probably going to take at least another two weeks. So I was like, so I'm off, I have to tell my employer I'm off for another two weeks. She was like, uh, unfortunately, yes. So I was like, in a way, I was like, yes, score. <laughs> in another way, I was like, okay, you know, what is this? What does this all mean, right? So I go back to the house, talking to the wife. I was like, looks like I got another two weeks. And she was like, wow. She was like, babe. You know, this is everything that you've been asking for, been praying for, and it's kind of, you know, manifesting itself. Did you just quit your other job right then and there? Two weeks later. (laughs) I'll get into that part. Two weeks later. So, you know, things were looking good. It wasn't what I was currently making, you know, with my corporate job, but I saw the potential, right? I saw the clients. People were, the community was supporting me. People were coming out. They were joining the class, the whole nine. So I saw the potential. And it was one of those things that I never really invested in financially. It wasn't something that I was like, okay, I'm doing this to get super rich, right? It was one of those things that I knew how how much health meant to me, and I wanted to share the love with the community and show other people why it's important to be healthy. And without health, man, you know, the richest person in the world, what was it, uh, the Apple guy? Oh, Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, right? He has all the money in the world, but as soon as you don't have your health, you know, what happens? It's yeah. like all that is yeah, irrelevant. You don't take anything with you. Yeah, it's all irrelevant. So it was one of those things that I wanted to, to provide a great service for our community and just start educating them and letting them know, hey, we really got to take this stuff seriously because especially in the you know minority neighborhoods and stuff like that, I feel like we don't really talk about health as much as other ethnicities just for the simple fact is like if it's not affecting us it's kind of like out of sight out of mind kind of thing and it's really killing so many people by the hundreds of thousands when we're talking about um, high blood pressure diabetes heart disease all these things that are plaguing our community um so it was a really something that it, it really spoke to my soul to say, hey, let me get back into our community. Let me start educating people. Let me start showing that it is possible that you can make a transformation as long as you dedicate your time. You know what I'm saying? It's so many of us that say, 
well, I'm too tired. I don't have the time to do it. But in reality, we have more than enough time to, to make 45 minutes, an hour of our day dedicated to ourself, to, to put in the time to do something physical, whether it's riding a bike, walking. It doesn't have to be a crazy workout. It's just doing something to get the blood flowing again, bringing life back to the body. Well, they even say even three hours per week, I mean, makes a big difference. Yeah, huge. Yeah. And and I know, and I think out of the top 30 health problems that humans experience, uh -huh. 27 can be cured just by losing weight, eating healthier, and exercising. Exactly. And I think we're so, we've, we've gotten to a point in our life that we're so out of tune with what our body, kind of like you drive your car, right? The check engine light goes off. Instantly, you know, well, maybe a hose is about to go out. Maybe I have to get a new spark plug. Something's going on, right? Well, we have those same things internally with us. But guess what? We kind of just, just like the car sometimes, we're like, ah, I'll wait until I have to go do it, you know? Some of us, as soon as that check light goes on, we go, we take it to the dealership, we see what's going on. Some of us, we just look at it, we drive, and then when the smoke starts coming out the hood, we're like, oh man, there's probably something that had to do with the check engine light, right? And so many of us do that right now with our bodies. It's like, our bodies are telling us like, man, you're getting signs, all these warning signs that you're going down this road and your body can't take too much more of this punishment. But we're like, ah, you know, I haven't had a heart attack. I haven't had to, you know, they haven't told me I had diabetes yet. So, huh? Or I'm a young guy. I'm a young guy. I'm still young. And um, it's it's really realizing that, you know, kids these days are getting diagnosed with high blood pressure, diabetes. Um, I just heard a friend of the family, um, one of their teenager sons just had a mild stroke. As a teenage kid, a mild stroke, that's crazy to hear. You know what I'm saying? You think of strokes, you're, when we were growing up, you're thinking of somebody in their the 60s, 60s or 70s, 70s yeah. having a stroke, not a teenager, you know? And uh, and it, it's it's just bringing the reality that nutrition is so, so many people are putting so much more processed foods and foods that don't, Not I, I hate to even call them foods because that's not what they really are things that don't serve any kind of nutritional value to our body putting it into us and trying to survive off of it and it's really killing us from the insides you know what I'm saying so yeah it's like one of those things that um, it was just one of my missions to go back out there and say hey let me be a living example of when you when you kind of start focusing on your health it kind of leads you down a path of what your true purpose here is. You know what I'm saying? Because it's one of these things that I even ask, I ask all my clients this question. It's like, currently, you know, if money didn't exist, what would you be doing with your life right now? And you'd be so surprised. Like, I would say 90% of them say something totally opposite of what they're doing right now with their life. I had a very similar conversation with someone just a few days ago and it's amazing how many people would be much happier if they just gave up the rat race mm -hmm. of always trying to chase the dollar, right? Yeah. And just said, hey, let me chase what I am passionate <coughs> about, yeah. right? And many people would be happier making twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 less yeah. but doing something they love. Because it doesn't seem like work at that point. Exactly. You know? And it's, it's so funny because... As growing up in the U.S., you know what I'm saying? We're so materialistic, you know? We grow up and we're fed all these marketing tools, commercials, all these things. Oh, you got to have the latest car. You got to have the newest clothes. You got to have this. You got to have that. You got to have that. And we're one of the, the countries that are suffering the most when it comes to all these diseases where you would look at a, a you could say any third world country, you could throw one out there. And these people don't have as much material things, but they're living a lot healthier life, a much, a much comfortable life, just because they're not chasing the dollar. They're actually going out there, you know, my mom, um, I'm half black, I'm half Venezuelan, my mom's, uh, her half of the family is still in Venezuela. 
And when we go out there, it's just a whole different kind of world. Like, you know, people still go to work and do their thing, and but it's it's more family oriented. And what I mean by that is like, you know, at lunchtime, I, I would see my uncles come home from work and they would have lunch with the family and they have like a little siesta, take a little nap, and then they would go back to work later on in the afternoon kind of thing, right? Yeah, and I, and I think a lot of that also comes down to the quality of food, right? Yeah. Because in many other countries, um, and I was, about a year ago, I was in Portugal and spent about two weeks there, and everyone cooks seasonally. Yeah, I mean that's just the way it is. Exactly. I mean, I, I think America might be one of the very few countries that seasons don't really matter when it comes to food. Yeah. I mean, you can find any type of food at any time, right? Exactly. And so I, I think one of the problems is the quality of food and all the processed foods yeah. that we have. Yeah. You just don't see that in so many other places. Even Europe, that's fully developed, right? A lot of their foods, I mean, they have strict laws that prevent certain types of processing. Yeah, and they're they're making even stricter laws on the meats and stuff that they they put out there as well, where it's like, in the U.S., man, it's like, they're just all about the dollar. At the end of the day, like, the more research um, you can do as a person and just look into it, it's like, wow, it's amazing what they would actually allow on the market. You just say, hey, you know, they're willing to buy it. Let's sell it, you know, and yeah, and the f- the type of feed that they give. I had Ryan Myers, who's another uh, fitness trainer, uh-huh. um, on the podcast a couple months back, and uh, it's funny. He's actually doing a documentary now about going vegan and okay. then going back to meat. Wow! And he's saying he's actually you visiting. Inter- you got to introduce me to this guy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. He's he's been going to various like slaughterhouses to yeah. see how meat is processed and he's like it's a what I mean it's just an eye opener as to how they do this entire process yeah. but then also the type of feed that they give the animals and the lack of nutritional value inside of the end product yeah. the meat that you buy at the grocery store has zero you know has zero nutritional value exactly. because of the type of feed that they've been giving the animal it's just you know, it's just horrible. And so he actually recommends if you want to buy meat, buy from actual producers and growers and farmers and uh, that will actually give nutritional value to the cows, to the pigs, uh-huh. to the animals. And then that eventually translates into very high quality meat for you. Yeah. But there's just not many people that do that. <laughs> That's a problem. And man, the, the whole thing is, I mean, I remember as a kid, like growing up and being able to go either to my grandmother's house or a friend of the family's house and they would have like plum they would have the plum tree they would have the apple tree some of them would be growing greens and stuff in their backyard and it it seems like so many people are fighting to to make the money now they they forget that they can grow a lot of this stuff like you said it's seasonal but it saves them a whole bunch of money and they're going to get something with nutritional value and they know where it's coming from at the end of the day um, I know uh, uh, the biggest documentary that, that's been out lately is What the Health and it kind of just like kind of just woke some people up to even start kind of doing some of the research there was a lot um, of backlash against that one though yeah for some of the exaggerated points they were trying but I, I think the main point of it all was a good message yeah it's just kind of be more aware of what you're eating and everything doesn't seem what it seems like just at the front of it right exactly it was because it's going on in April two years since I cut out me and and my journey was a little bit different um, you know because a lot of people you know say for the earth and for the animals and stuff like that and it wasn't even something that I was consciously doing it was a uh, I was at the barbershop with my kids right and one of the barbers was like hey you know you're a personal trainer right and I was like yeah he was like a uh, quick question he was like what do you know what recommendations can you give me I just went vegan like a month or two ago I was like vegan I was like in our community I didn't know anybody that was vegan you know I only heard that that word one time growing up being vegan and it's a funny story behind that too um, but I was like vegan I was like mm, 
damn, I can't give you any advice, bro. I was like, I really don't know nothing about being vegan. I haven't done any kind of research on it. He was like, oh, man, you know, you know you're at the barbershop. They're trying to pull your leg. He's like, oh, I thought you were a trainer. I thought you would know something, blah, blah, blah. I was like, nobody's ever asked me. I never had to, you know, never even thought about it. I was like, but tell you what. I said, I'm going to actually do some research and give me some time, and I'll get back to you on it, and I'll give you some information. And then, you know, being a man of my word, I started doing some research. I was like, okay, this sounds interesting. I was like, before I give anybody any kind of recommendation, I like trying it out on myself to see how, you know, how my body would take to it and to give them my honest opinion, um, especially with the protein and all that kind of stuff where people think you need all this excess protein to, to be strong. But um, I did it for 30 days. I told myself I was going to give up the meat for 30 days, the meat and the dairy, the whole nine. And, uh, man, when I tell you after those 30 days, <laughs> it was one of those things where, like, it was an awakening process for me. And I was like, I couldn't see myself going back. And then That was, was two years ago? Yeah, it's going on two years now. It was like, it was like, wow. I was like, it just, it just, just detoxifying my body. It felt stronger than ever. Um, my recovery time in the gym was better than ever. And it was like, it just felt right. You know, just when something, when you do something in life and you just feel that, like, oh, I just felt good, you know? It was just having that feeling all the time. And I was like, man. So the wife wasn't on board at all at first, right? She was like, what? She was like, no, nah, this is your thing. Like, <laughs> if you want to give up meat, go right ahead. But I'm going to still, you know, cook like I've always cooked, right? And what was crazy, wife was fa facing some, you know, med medical issues. She had some, you know, IBS, some thyroid issues. And the doctors were talking about operating and having her on, having to be on medication um, for the rest of her life and stuff like that. And she was like, babe, you know, you've been telling me how good you've been feeling. And, you know, you're telling me how, you know, cutting out meat can help with certain things. She was like, maybe I should try it for 30 days before I go down this route with the doctors. I said, why not? You know, worst case scenario, if you don't feel anything, you got to go down that route anyways. So um, she did it. She did it for 30 days and all her symptoms disappeared. So then it blew her mind. She's like, oh my God, the doctors told me that I wouldn't, I'd have to get an operation and do this. I was like, you know, your body heals itself at the end of the day. You just have to allow it. You have to put the right minerals and vitamins in it to allow it to do what it's supposed to do. And she was like, wow. So she became a believer and, you know, slowly but surely start teaching our sons, you know. And it was so funny because initially when I did it, it was like it was the black sheep of the family, like going to out, all the outings and the whole nine. People were going like, what? You don't eat meat. Are you crazy? You know, majority of the get-togethers we go to, you're having barbecue. You're having all these foods that are just... They Makes all have really meat. Tough. Yeah. yeah, you know, best especially on both sides of the culture. My mom almost disowned me that when she heard <laughs> that I, I wasn't having meat. She was like, "Are you dying? Are you sick? What's going on?" You know, like she, she in in Latin culture, you know, women they they tend food is love. You know, so when you're feeding, if they can't feed you, they're like, especially food. your mom. Yeah, you can't, you can't insult your mom and, when it comes to her cooking. And, right? and, exactly, and that was a tough one. It was one of the things I had to put my foot down and now you know after almost two years we're kind of we're on the same page but it it was a it was a tough road <laughs> yeah my girlfriend and i did uh, we went vegan for three months straight okay and this was two maybe three years ago mm -hmm. and i have to say that was the best i felt all i mean energy wise body wise just everything just seemed to like click uh -huh. The reason why we got off is because we went to the house of prime rib <laughs> for a celebration yeah. and then that just did us in i mean yeah. we were like oh we just love meat way too much uh -huh. but we try to we're we actually eat less meat now though after that experience okay and so we'll mix in instead of uh some meals where we would typically throw in chicken or uh, steak or pork whatever yeah. we'll throw in tofu yeah. or mix it up or uh tempeh yeah you know tempeh. stuff yeah stuff like that yeah. um we do a lot of stuff with lentils beans all types of stuff exactly you know? yeah and and that's one thing like if you were vegan or even vegetarian 
20, 30 years ago, uh-huh. you were like a nut job. You oh, yeah. Like, you're a hippie. You're yeah, somebody no one, in the Yeah, no one's going to hang out with you, right? <laughs> with the sandals and stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But now, like, it's even trendy to the point where a ton of people even do it just as like a diet fad, like a trend, yeah. just to try it out or say they're vegan, vegetarian. Yeah. And if you go to Berkeley, yeah. Oakland, San Francisco, there's a ton of restaurants out there that oh, are yeah. vegetarian, vegan, that make amazing food. Oh, yeah. Um, one of my, my really close friends right now, uh, he's the owner of the the Veg Hub. I don't know if you've ever been there. No. It's off of MacArthur and Fruitvale. Uh, Chef Chu, amazing. Like any, any client that ever asked me, you know, so what is vegan food? What does it taste like? It's like one of the first places I take them. They make uh, uh, subs, they make wraps, and when you bite into it, he, he makes his own um, soy-based meat alternative, like his own recipe and everything, in-house recipe. And when you taste this stuff, man, it's like, whew, it blows your mind. It's like, people are like, there's no meat in here. It's like, not an ounce. They're like, Whatever this is, it tastes exactly like me. It's like, hey, you know, it's, now, like, it's a lot of different alternatives out there now. Now, break down the difference between vegan and vegetarian. Because yeah. a lot of people kind of mix up both, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, I, and I know there's few variations on vegetarian, oh, too. Oh, yeah, it's pescatarian and all the different kind of var- variations. But to really break it down easy, it's like, okay, so vegan... Everything that they take in for nutritional value, none of it comes from any living creature. So no eggs, no dairy, nothing like that. Now, a vegetarian, they don't eat any kind of meat, but they will consume dairy, eggs, honey, things of that nature. So that's probably the the best way to distinct the two. It's like uh, a vegan wouldn't eat honey, wouldn't eat drink milk, wouldn't eat eggs. A vegetarian still would, so. But everything else is pretty.